It sounds like Mississippi is a bit missing in action when it comes to supporting its own hemp industry. Residents of the Northwest Territories in Canada get a bit of good news for their wallets. And the University of Colorado is expanding its options for higher education. It's Wednesday, July 15th, and this is your Tricombs Morning Buzz. Broadcasting live from the Tricombs.com studios in Southern California, it's time for your Morning Buzz. We bring you late-breaking news that keeps you up to date with what's happening in the cannabis industry. First today, the state of Mississippi is directing hemp farmers to apply for the USDA program instead of their state program. According to Hemp Industry Daily, one of the last hemp holdout states, Mississippi, is directing farmers interested in growing the crop to apply for an individual producer license through the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The state passed the Mississippi Hemp Cultivation Act into law late last month, legalizing hemp cultivation and directing the Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce to create a state plan. However, lawmakers did not appropriate the necessary funding needed to implement a state hemp cultivation program, leaving USDA oversight the only legal option for producers to grow hemp. Mississippi farmers must send their USDA hemp production applications electronically to farmbill.hemp at usda.gov for expedited processing due to the agency's current remote working conditions. Mississippi was one of three states without a legal hemp program. South Dakota passed legislation for hemp production in March, but has not yet received USDA approval for its state plan. Idaho is now the only state in the U.S. where hemp production remains illegal. Next, Northwest Territories in Canada are dropping prices, hoping to combat the illicit market. Contrapreneur reports the government of Canada's Northwest Territories has reduced the price of all cannabis products by 10%, hoping the price drop will help legal sellers compete with the unregulated market. The Northwest Territories Liquor and Cannabis Commission said it has a better understanding of the operating costs associated with the distribution and sale of cannabis two years after cannabis was legalized federally, and the agency is confident it can reduce cannabis prices while continuing to maintain a safe and secure retail regimen. Caroline Wozniak, the Northwest Territories Minister of Finance, said the change is one of many steps that need to be taken to accomplish the goal of eliminating illegal sales in the province. Currently, legal cannabis is only available at five liquor stores in the NWT and through the Cannabis Commission's online sales platform. A Statistics Canada report from April 2019 found that the NWT had the highest legal and illegal cannabis prices in the nation post-legalization at $14.45 per gram, an increase of 13.7% from pre-legalization prices, but lower than the national average increase per gram of 17%. And last up today, a pharmacy school in Colorado is the first in the state to offer graduate-level degrees in cannabis education. Industry analysts say the market size of cannabinoid-based pharmaceuticals could generate up to $2 billion by the end of 2020, and legal sales could earn up to $23 billion by 2025. The Colorado Medical Marijuana Registry reports that 6,694 patients received a physician certification for medical cannabis in the month of April alone, bringing the total number of medical cannabis users on the state's registry to more than 80,000. In a recent report published by Mayo Clinic researchers, half of the healthcare professionals surveyed said that they were not prepared to answer patients' questions about medical cannabis, and three-quarters expressed a desire to learn more. It's findings like these that led experts at the University of Colorado Skaggs School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences on the Anschutz Medical Campus to offer their first medical cannabis courses last spring. As opposed to promoting or demoting the use of medical cannabis, the eight-week Continuing Education Certificate in Medical Cannabis Education for Healthcare Providers sought to provide a deep understanding of the role that medical cannabis may or may not have on inpatient care. The response to the CE offering was so successful that the school is expanding its educational offerings to include advanced academic degrees in the field of cannabis science and medicine, or CSM. The move makes the School of Pharmacy the first in the state of Colorado and one of only a handful nationwide to offer graduate studies in medical cannabis. The new programs include a graduate certificate in cannabis science and medicine and a master's degree in pharmaceutical sciences, cannabis science, and medicine specialty track. 
That was today's buzz. Thanks for listening. For more cannabis news and insights from industry professionals, visit trichome.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. It really helps others find the show. You can also keep up with Trichomes on all social media platforms and the Trichomes YouTube channel. For trichomes.com, I'm Allison Benyehuda. And I'm David Fortson. Take care.